Hello, everybody. So, for the record, JT, Jean Thierry is way too complicated. I learned that about 25 years ago. So, you can pronounce my name once, scratch it, and then it's just JT. So, basically, I've been in Symphony for three years, and I really want to talk not so much about technical account management or engineering, but much more about developer relationships. Because the key to our developer relationships world is like, and why client is we face off to clients. And our customers, basically, they're the developers. And the developer community, basically, is we need to evangelize our APIs, understand uh, how to train developers and grow our community. Because if you look at Symphony, just very quickly, just, oh, sorry, wrong direction. Quickly by the numbers, if you think of Symphony, so we have 500,000 active users every day. We have 170 million messages that we send every month. But what's more important is we have like 2,400 bots in production just running. They do about 10% of our volume in terms of messages, but that's growing all the time. But the, the key figure is we have 1,700 developers today. How do we support them? How do we grow them? And that's the key. So we have two ways to grow. We have developer programs, and that's one thing. We have a booth outside where we have some key people where it's do trainings, activities, hackathons, you name it. But what's more important is, as we've grown, is we need to listen to the community. And the only way for us to listen to the community is we need to contribute to the community. So we've re-engaged open source. We were in, we were out, now we're in. And what's very important is, since September, if you look at our program, is we've, first of all, the first thing was our Java BDK. So in September, we decided to contribute a Java BDK. In the summer, over the summer, we created a Python JDK. So, more importantly, that's for full stack developers. And the challenge you have is it's great, but it's still hard to build bots. So, yes, you can build it. It takes minutes to build a bot. You can do this, but you've got to do a lot of work. And Symphony is all about workflows. We keep on talking about workflows, but how can we make workflows in an easy way? So that's our second contribution. We just did it. So we've did, we, uh, we just built out our workflow developer kit. So this allows basically not the developer, but a workflow developer to have a simple way to say, I'd like to build a workflow. For instance, I'd like to have a bot that opens a window, sends a message to this person. If the person doesn't answer, send it to another person and vice versa. But in very simple ways, you can build workflows and this basically just lowers the barriers of entry of Symphony. So the reason why we're putting it open source is we know that the community is going to want to look at this and say, this is limiting. I want to add this function. I want to do this. So that's really the key to doing this. And the final thing, so now I can build bots, I can build workflows. What's missing in Symphony? Well, it's all about interoperability. It's about being open. So for a while, our focus as we're growing as a company was we need to make our platform stable. In fact, that's where you hear about that was doing more support, so more managing accounts. And now that we have a, a solid foundation, how do we connect with everybody else? Or how does everybody else connect to us? And this is more for our partners or internal applications. How does Symphony be, can Symphony be part of an application or interact with an application? And this is everything about FDC3. And that is the key to what we're doing right now. It's like, it's, we have to be open, we have to listen, we have to contribute, and we need to allow other people to contribute. So, understanding how do we support this? So on the Symphony side, we have resources. So we already have four developer certification tracks where people can just go online, it's free, you go there, you have training, you have a certification, Java, Python, you name it, you're there, you're junior, you're senior, you can do it. As of today, with three open source repositories and growing, we have a dedicated engineering team, more than one in fact, but it's like, but really dedicated to our, I'm gonna say our BDKs, our SDKs, and we have one de dedicated re developer relationships team. So we have the engineering arm on one side, and on the other side, we have the outreach, the people that are outside, which are the experts to build things on top of our platform. And since we've pretty much rolled this out as of September 2020, we had more than 1,400 commits to the open repository, which shows that it's working and continuing. So the question now is more around what, what do we want to do next? And the next thing is next step is, well, 
there's one thing that everybody's been asking for, in fact, I was asking for a long time ago, is can we have a .NET BDK? So that's gonna be the next contribution. Can we have a UI toolkit? So that's the next. And then continuing afterwards is, which is kind of the key things, you build workflows, but workflows, and if you talk about this person's not a developer, it's all about examples. So can I have a gallery that's in open source where I can download a workflow? and tweak it, do some changes, and then everybody can contribute because very often, we're not talking about complicated workflows around uh, the enterprise workflow systems. We're talking about workflows within the Symfony application. I have this, it opens a windows, it does that. It connects potentially to financial data, but it's like having a gallery is gonna help everybody just start contributing and be more efficient. So we go from seconds to be able to build your basic workflow to, oh, this is almost finished, I'm 80% there. And finally, here's what the, one of the key things we're really looking at in ter terms of developer outreach is we're never gonna stop. Whereas so as we built our .NET BDK, we're gonna have a certification at .NET. We're gonna do more developer days, more hackathons. And the goal is really to have the community, first of all, work amongst each other and just ensuring that people know how to use our tools. And that's, that's really all it's about, it's about listening and outreach so we can evangelize the platform. So, two things for today, because I don't want to steal the thunder. There's a person called Olivier Pouponnet who really had, and there was Yong Chin as well. They're on our booth, outside the Symphony booth. And what really is, if you want to know, if you, people like Raspberry Pi, it's like, it's funny, it's like there was, I was impressed. We, on one side, you've got this huge server, and on the other side, we have my guys with this little, tiny little thing. And so they just wanted to prove out that their, their Symphony workflow and the full stack is basically running for our uh, WDK on this little stack. And here's a little demo of here's how you do a workflow. And then at four o'clock, which is he blew my socks up the first time he showed it to me, Olivier will be doing a full demo of here's our uh, WDK and here's how it works. That's all. And for anything else, you know, just well, people can reach out to me, of course, but if just, just go to developers.symphony.com and it just shows out the whole journey. You want to be a developer? You want an API? Do you want to get a certification? Just go through it. That's all. Thank you so much. I know. It's great to be here. I know, it's nice being here. Yeah, we do. I met him like four years ago when this was starting. Yeah, <laughs> things that were a little smaller back I then. I know. And you Thank changed you. a couple of hats since then. So I it's have. great to have you here. <laughs> Take Thank care, Thank you, man. JD. So, folks, uh, that brings us to our uh, final uh, panel um, for this morning, of course. Um, you know, I would say last but not least. Um, so you've heard it from financial institutions. You've heard it from technology vendors. You've heard it from you know, financial technology vendors. Um, the next panel is going to be something, again, that I've mentioned before, is very strategic to us and really relates to our, to the potential we think exists in open source uh, to deliver value, you know, in the regulatory world. Uh, and so without further ado, I want to introduce our two uh, uh, speakers. Um, Joanne Barefoot, I'm really delighted to have her here. Uh, she is the CEO and founder of AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation. They've been an amazing partner in our Open RecTech initiative, uh, uh, helping us really translate uh, you know, our open source language towards regulators and much more than that. Um, she is uh, um, the co-founder of Hummingbird RecTech. She is the host of a podcast show, Barefoot Innovation. Um, she is a noted advocate of regulation innovation. Joanne is a senior fellow emerita at the Harvard Kennedy School for Business and Government. Joining uh, Joanne is uh, a good friend, someone that actually was at our launch event three years ago. That's when I first met him. Um, and since then, he's been a great supporter of the foundation, uh, Sultan Megji. Uh, was named Chief Innovation Officer for the FDIC in February 2021. Uh, I know he's one of us, it's a, it's a geek like me. Um, Sultan served as an advisor to the uh, US Treasury, the Group of Seven, the G7, uh, the Office of the Controller of the Currency, the OCC, 
the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, uh, in the area of cybersecurity, quantum computing, and in artificial intelligence. Um, I'm looking forward to this panel. So please welcome on stage Joanne and Sultan.